morning, Muscadish News. Today, we are doing a stupidly exciting video for me because this is my all-time favorite abandoned place ever. I've been talking about Chernobyl for like five years, seven years. So when, whenever we first started going into abandoned stuff, this was at every top list ever because Chernobyl is the largest abandoned place city on earth. This is the holy grail, top of the line, explore for someone who's really into exploring. <laughs> I've always said that this is the top of the list, some place that I've always wanted to go to, but I realized that I'd never done a video on it. And honestly, I didn't know all that much about it, other than the fact that it it is the Holy Grail. It is the largest abandoned place out there. So today we're gonna get into why this giant city was abandoned. Two, what is it like now? And three, could Colby and I possibly go there this year? Okay, real quick before we get into the actual video, I want to say with a drum roll, please. <laughs> My project is officially live. I came out with my own website where I'm gonna be telling stories, doing extra videos like this, doing interviews, maybe even a podcast later on, and a whole new Instagram where I can post a bunch of new content. And guys, this is all free. It's on dumbandwise.com. Check it out. I'm doing this because I really like talking about like deeper stuff and stuff that it doesn't necessarily always have to do with like exploring or this YouTube channel. It's gonna be a different side of me, the stuff that like I talk about with my friends, like business ideas, like things like that that you know obviously just don't make sense for this channel so I gotta put it somewhere else but again all free content I'm super excited about it and it just started so yeah give it a try and let me know down in the comments what you think on to the video before I get into the whole story, I wanna give a brief overview for those of you guys that don't know what Chernobyl is. They had like a giant documentary series, I think on Netflix or HBO or something like that. They've had many, many YouTube uh, series. It's a hugely famous place because of how crazy this story is. But to sum it up before I get into the details, Chernobyl is like a nuclear power plant outside of this city called Priprat. It's in the Ukraine area and it was like part of the Soviet Union, all that stuff. Anyway, there was a giant disaster, actually the number one nuclear disaster ever to be recorded in history. It was one of two scale seven, which is like the highest point of like a nuclear disaster to ever be recorded. The other one was that tsunami in Japan. I can make a video on that as well, but this one is the Holy Grail again. So there was a problem with the nuclear reactor and the entire city had to evacuate. And now it sits as the largest abandoned city in the world. This is super interesting to all like the exploring people around there. And just honestly, the entire world. Like by the time I'm finished with the story, you guys will like think this is the craziest thing that's ever happened because it really is. So yeah, let's get in. Into it. What happened? Why did it happen? What's it look like now? And can we visit? Let's get started. I am no nuclear scientist, so I'm not gonna get into the very specific terms and everything like that. If you want a super detailed, like scientific definition of why this happened, there's a bunch of other videos. For me, I'm just gonna explain it in Sam Goldbach terms which are pretty easy. <laughs> okay, so we have this power plant. Tons of people live there. It's north of this city called Priprat. And, and by the way, if I say these words wrong, my bad, not Ukrainian, I don't know. Anyway, so they do these reactor tests, you know, like, hey, like in an emergency, let's say this thing goes wrong, let's figure out how to solve it. You know, safety tests, all that stuff. But on one of those routine safety tests on Saturday, April 26th, 1986, something went wrong, obviously. In reactor number four, they were doing the simulation as if like power were to go down and like see if the backup generator generators could kick in and solve the whole problem. They'd done this test before, it worked out, but they just didn't have like the correct answer they were doing again. Now what happened is basically the power went way lower than expected. They were aiming to get around like 25%, but it went down to like 1% power. They're freaking out, so what they decided to do is up the power again. And that's when things went wrong. Technical words, technical things, whatever. The point is, it went way too high for them to control. So they had a bunch of safety features in place. These one weren't good enough, and then two, they broke. So this routine power up thing went way above what they're normally there. So basically the power went down. They hyped it back up because they're like, oh God, like we don't want it to go like all the way out. And it went way above capacity, like all the way to 100%, which is not what these reactors were meant for. And so everything started overheating, breaking too much energy and power was in this nuclear reactor. Now to solve this problem, it took way, way longer than expected. But the only people that were prepared to do these types of tests were the day and the evening shift. So when it got all the way through the night, these people that were helping were unprepared for the task. You can just imagine this nuclear power 
point just getting more and more energy and these people like just actually just don't know what to do there was an explosion there's an explosion of energy at nuclear capacity and there was no going back from there during this explosion a couple people died all the safety equipment like literally burned up and then the roof exploded off letting a bunch of radiation into the air which is a horrible horrible thing again not going to get to the science of it but if you were an unprotected like you didn't have like a suit on worker standing next to the reactor you had like two minutes to live before you got a lethal dose of radiation that's how much radiation was going straight into the town so picture this this is the middle of the night this is like wee hours of the morning a giant explosion of radiation something that the world has never seen before blows off the roof the safety equipment is not there these workers don't necessarily know exactly how to cool this whole system down and this nuclear meltdown that's happening in reactor 4 is so potent that it creates the most dangerous material on earth technically this material is called corey so the whole thing was like melting down into this radiation infused lava again like really 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 deadly probably the most deadly material on the planet and now it's just sitting in this town to give you a perspective the amount of radiation that was coming out of this reactor after this explosion was 400 times the radiation hiroshima insane but what's more insane is what happened after So there's this nuclear explosion with radiation that's extremely deadly happening right outside this main town of Prepreg. The crazy thing is the town was not immediately evacuated. The workers there like didn't really understand the level of danger that everyone was in and the amount of radiation that was pouring out. This radiation was going super fast. Less than 48 hours after this explosion, the radiation had already traveled 620 miles. Literally that morning, it was already all over the town, which is crazy because they didn't evacuate. During the morning of the explosion, a bunch of people fell like super super ill and everyone was like kind of freaking out like why is this so weird you know there's like weird white stuff and water flooding everywhere about the town like something's off they knew it that evening of april 26 two people had already died from radiation and 52 people were hospitalized because of it so finally the next morning on the 27th that is when like word got out to authorities and they finally evacuated the town but here is the craziest part so they realized how bad this got and they realized oh god like if we don't evacuate right now a lot of people are gonna die so this is what they said they said hey guys get exactly what you need to live for three days you'll be back in three days so just grab you know food a couple pieces of clothing and get out you have two hours so picture this your life like you are right now sitting at home you're just chilling with your family or with your boyfriend girlfriend hanging out going to school doing your job you just get this alarm saying you have two hours to leave what are you picking but they're saying it's all good don't pick like your super important stuff because all you need is like a weekend getaway amount of stuff in a suitcase and then you did so you're like okay cool i'll grab a few things and i'll leave and then every Everybody evacuated the city. So this is the craziest part. Think about every abandoned place ever. It's vacated over time. Like a ghost town, people move out. They leave, okay, it falls in disrepair, whatever, peace out. People are like, oh, they don't like this house. They like evacuate all their stuff and they leave. No, not this place. This place is an entire city stopped in time. 50,000 people used to live their life right here and now it's a ghost town. And then a few days later, the next 70,000 people were also evacuated. So 120,000 people just up and left as if they were coming back so everything is still there. The craziest part about this is just the time stop of history. Like if you go back, if you go back there right now, there are clothing still on hangers. There's kids' toys still on their bed. There's work half done on tables. There's like still probably food decaying in their pantry. You know, it's unlike any other place on earth. So the aftermath, we have this giant nuclear explosion. We have tens of thousands of people that immediately evacuated the city, leaving everything behind. But what do you do when you just up and leave a city that is encompassing the most dangerous nuclear explosion to ever hit the world? A lot of stuff went wrong because of this obviously. Right off the bat, two people were killed because of the explosion, and then they called this giant emergency operation. Just that immediate operation that they called in cost about 2.5 billion US dollars, equivalent. 134 of the staff members that were trying to solve the problem due to that immediate radiation, and 28 of those people died within a few months because of the radiation, and then 14 more died of cancer-related deaths that were also back to the radiation. However, by the year 2000, it said that 3.5 million people in the Ukraine were affected by this blast. But you gotta ask the question, it's not gonna stop unless something's done about it. They had to immediately close off the number four reactor, right? How do they do that? You can't go in there without dying in a couple minutes because of all the radiation. So this is the craziest part. Their plan was to make a sarcophagus around the reactor. But in order to do that, they had to clear all the debris off the roof. You know, the, the entire roof exploded. There's a ton of debris. It's all soaked in radiation, super deadly. How do they do it? 
robots, except it didn't work. They sent in a bunch of robots to start clearing the debris, but the radiation was so deadly that it destroyed the electrical wiring in the robots and nothing could be moved. So what do you do? Dude, this is freaking crazy, man. It's like a movie. It actually was turned into a documentary, but it's real life. It's really sad, honestly. What they had to do is they had to send in humans with giant protective clothing in order to move the debris. But if you remember, I just said that if you went close to the radiation debris for more than two minutes, it could be a deadly dose. That's the crazy part. These men that were sent in to clear the debris could only be on the roof for 40 to maximum 90 seconds at a time. What? Like imagine your work day is 40 to 90 seconds because if you spend any second longer than that, you could die. What a 40, what a 40. It's crazy. It took 5,000 men at this like 90 second period to clear the rooftop in order to create this sarcophagus around reactor number four. But they did it and they blocked it off and it is releasing way less radiation, which is great, but it's not all of it. In 2016, 2017, they made a whole new sarcophagus that was like around the other one. And they've been doing tons of testing all the way up until 2020. But basically experts say that this nuclear cleanup is not gonna be finished until 2065. It's almost a hundred year problem from this one explosion. And that's just the cleanup. There's not gonna be considered like habitable. Like you can go back and live in this city for anywhere from like minimum 300 years to like some people say tens of thousands of years. And the worst part is it didn't stop there. It didn't just affect that town. So the nuclear power plant is right on the Pre-Pratt River, which that river leads into this thing called the Nyper Reservoir System. Basically it's one of the largest reservoirs in all of Europe. And now it's feeding radiated water, radiated fish into this giant reservoir. Not a good thing for everyone to be drinking their freaking water and then, you know, you drink it, you get a third arm. But legit, like a lot of farmers were reporting a couple years after this explosion, a lot of animals were like growing third arms or like weird different eyes or like missing limbs or heads. It was super deformed, like everything was just kind of fucked. Okay, let's get into it. Chernobyl, what's it like now? It's been over 30 years and in that time, the total cost had come out to like $235 billion. They like the equivalent. Basically bankrupting Ukraine and to this day, five to 7% of the government spending of the, the entire country is all still to do containment and decontamination of just Chernobyl. So this was a big mistake. Tons of people ended up dying. Millions of acres was just unusable. Water, forests, all that area that used to be used. Can't do it anymore and you couldn't live there anymore. Like I said, 120,000 people had to evacuate to other places and they can't go back. Now today there's a couple hundred people that live on the very outskirts of town and they're slowly going back into it but weirdly enough it is a tourist thing. There are ways you can go around Chernobyl with like a Geiger counter which is like basically measures radiation and you can go in certain areas that is far enough away from like the crazy radiation and you can take a tour of it. A lot of people have gone and yes, Colby and I are going this year if this gets 40,000 <laughs> no, but seriously, Chernobyl has been on the top of my abandoned exploration list since as long as I can possibly remember. I've wanted to see this place because it is just a historical moment stopped in time. And again, the largest abandoned city in the world. And now that it's kind of like safe to go there and tour it, I really want to go. Guys, we'll be able to see the craziest things we've ever captured on camera. Think about a city that just up and left in panic and radiation in the most like dangerous nuclear accident that's ever occurred. This place is crazy. So yeah, hopefully later in this year, Colby and I can go visit this place. Obviously this is incredibly sad. If you guys want to know a bunch of more information, go watch like the many docu-series that are on this. It gets really crazy how many lives changed like that. And then how many lives were affected in the aftermath. This has so much history to it and it's just one of the most interesting stories I've ever seen in my entire life. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please like this video. 40,000, we're going. And just by the way guys, if you want extra free content, I got exclusive stories and things that I've never talked about on the internet at dumbandwise.com. Check it out, let me know what you think. Hopefully you found this as interesting as I did and I cannot wait to go. I'll see you guys next week with another video. Adios.